Midweek. Sunshine skies, blue skies so far this week. Spicy and me been piecing a quilt about an hour or two every night. Patches from old rags the missus throwed away. Aunt T is always busy scrubbing old pots with river sand or shelling or snapping some kind of bean. If Uncle Heb ain't down in the stables with Hine or driving the family to and from somewhere, he sits with us. We tell stories to pass the time. My favorite story is how Uncle Heb and Aunt T got married. Uncle Heb starts a tale, but Aunt T puts in along the way. When Aunt T got to Belmont, Uncle Heb was living here over the kitchen where she was put to live. She caught his eye right away, she being so fine looking and all. She put me in the mind of you, Spicy, but she was real skinny. Didn't weigh more than 100 pounds soaking wet. I says to her for fun one day, how can you be a good cook then as you is? Aunt T took one look at Heb and says to Mass Henley, I ain't going to live in sin with no man, never you mind how old he is, and she just wouldn't cook for a day or two. Uncle Heb picks up the story again. Miss Lily was put out. In her mind, slave stays where they was put, and that was that. Left up to her, Aunt T would have got a good beating for having the nerve to rebel. But Mass Henley is particular about who fixes his food. Aunt T done been with him for years. When Ms. Lily tried to get one of the women from the quarters to cook, he wouldn't allow it. Finally, Maz come upon a perfect salvation that was good for everybody, especially Uncle Heb. One Sunday morning during the Christmas big times, the preacher man come to Belmont. Mass announced that Aunt T and me was to jump the broom. Didn't ask us, just told us at Aunt T. I wouldn't have chosen this old man myself, she always says, smiling. But over time, I done warmed the idea of having him round, though. Come Christmas, it will be our 16th year together, Uncle Heb say. At that point, Aunt T always pats him on the back of his hand. That's the way the story always ends. Everybody smiling. Them smiling at each other. I love that story and the way they tell it. It makes me feel good all the way through and through. Friday. The days is getting longer. And that means we have to work longer, too. In the summer, Miss Lily bath almost every day. This evening, Spicy and me carried water up the steps in buckets and poured it in Miss Lily's bath and tub. Then when she got through, we had to drain the water into buckets and take them down the steps and dump it. Spicy spilled water all up and down the steps, coming and going. I got tickled at her, and she got tickled at herself. For you know it, we was laughing so hard. It felt fine to laugh, and it felt even finer to see Spicy laughing. I didn't think she knew how next night. It's a clear night. Good moon. Good night to write. The upper room was too stuffy to sleep, so I brought my mat outside. We sometimes do that. Spicy followed me. It was just the two of us girls. We just laid there, looking up at the stars. We had laughed together, so it was easier for us to talk together. Come to find out, Spicy is motherless too. And, just as I thought, she been mistreated something awful, beaten and yelled at by her old mass. Says he's meaner than Moss Henley. I can't imagine. If I could, I'd run away from this place so far they'd never find me, she blurted out, looking like a cornered cat. You won't tell on me, will you? None of us is tattlers, I told her. I ain't either, she said. I believe her. Fourth Sunday in April. Sunrise will be here soon. But before starting the day, I want to write freedom again. It is such a strong word to so many people. F-R-E-E-D-O-M. Freedom. No picture comes to my mind. I just ain't got the magic. It shows me nothing. I've looked at the drone of the one-eyed man over and over. His face don't show me nothing either. One thing for sure. If the one-eyed man is doing something that makes Moss Henley mad... Then I figure he can't be all that bad. Monday. Miss Lily favors her daughter Clarissa, and I see why. She's all grown up and married with children of her own, near about the same age as William. Aunt T say Miss Lily thought she was through having babies, when along come William. She almost up and died trying to get him born. If it hadn't been for Aunt T, they say Miss Lily would have done died. The fancy doctors from over in Richmond had done everything, but Aunt T fixed up a potion, and the next morning little William come into this world feet first. 
the tree with all its wa one one william was trying to read him home and got stuck on an easy word his face turned all red what's it say mamma miss lily is short-tempered and quick to hit in good times today wasn't one of her better days she whacked william knuckles with a stick wonderful she shouted wonderful that's a plain english word used by millions of people wonderful look at it say it one der full william threw the book over his shoulder and stomped away miss lily followed close behind threatening to skin him alive the lessons ended on that sour note i looked in the hedges and found the book william had tossed away i'll give it back to the missus in a bit but not before i've had a chance to finish reading the rest of that poem tuesday wonder what a new pair of shoes feels like it's warm enough to go barefooted now my feet are glad to be out of william's old throat away shoes the ground feels good coming up through my toes all soft and cushy like maybe that's how new shoes feel wednesday mr ben thompson's betty came to belmont to finish fitting a dress for the missus betty is a good seamstress her master hires her out to make clothes for people far away makes wedding dresses fancy party dresses everything good as she is though betty can't hold a candle to my mamma when she was the seamstress here at belmont everybody say so the ugliest dress in virginia is being made right here at belmont for miss lily it is a shade of light green that looks washed out no color i'd rather wear this little plain cotton shirt i got on with nothing underneath it than all that grand mess she's having made after betty finished in the big house she stopped by to speak to aunt t in the kitchen i listened careful not to jump into grown folks talk betty say jasper and naomi from over the teasdale plantation runned away several weeks ago the dogs was on they sense when all of a sudden they got all befuddled went to howling and carrying on heard red pepper will do that say aunt t then betty say something that make me listen real close word tell it was a white man that helped them get way on a railroad what runs under the ground a one-eyed white man they says that set me to thinking if the one-eyed man helped jasper and naomi run away then he must be what they call a abolistine day later i can't stop thinking about the abolistines seems some white folks don't want slavery they be the abolistines I can hardly imagine that, but it makes me happy to know that them kind of people is out there somewhere. The white folks that is masters wants to keep slavery. I know about them. I want to know more about the abolistines. Where do they live? How many is it? Do they all wear patches over their eyes? Are they all men? One thing for sure is that the abolistines is helping slaves to get to freedom, and knowing that is good for now. Friday evening, April 29th, 1859, I think. Spicy and I was dust in the large parlor. Spicy broke a vase and Miss Lily gave her a bad whooping. Ten hard swats across the back with a switch. Look more like a tree limb to me. Aunt T rubbed her rooms with a paste made from powdered oak leaves and rainwater. Takes this sting out and keeps the storage from festering. It almost made me sick when I saw Spicy's back. It wasn't the new cuts, but the old scars. She'd done been beat many, many times before. And hard, too. Now I see why Spicy is so deep down hurt. Been beat on so much. I ain't never come under the lash like that. And I don't want to, either. Miss Lily beat Spicy bad just for breaking a vase. What would she do to me if she knew I could read and write? The idea makes me tremble. Sunday. After last meal. I almost died of fear when Spicy spilled gravy on a guest's dress, broke a plate, and chipped a cup while serving dinner. I thought Miss Lily was going to kill her. Miss Lily promised her guest, She going straight to the tobacco fields tomorrow. I saw Spicy smile. She wanted to get sent to the fields, to get away from being round Mass Henley and Miss Lily. That was a silly way to go about it, and I told her so later on. Anyway, Spicy's plan didn't work, because just to spite his wife, Maz Henley took sides with Spicy. Say all Spicy needs is to be trained. What do you care what happens to me, Spicy asked me later. I saw your back, and I wouldn't want that to happen to you again. 
Not to nobody. And I like you. Spicy looked real surprised, like nobody had ever said that to her before. So for now, Spicy stays with us in the kitchen. And I'm glad. I think she might be too. First Sunday in May. Cooked and served three meals. Two house guests. Toted water for baths. Help with cleanup. I am so tired. No spirit to write. I've still got to wash out my dress, so I'll start the week clean. Monday night. Aunt T sent me down to the quarters to take an ointment to Aggie. Spicy went long. Wook tries to be nice. But for some reason, Missy Dunn took a dislike into Spicy. That Missy is really changing. I showed her a little bit, and she laughed at me about still playing with dolls. Later, Spicy told me not to worry about what Missy say. People teases you sometimes, because they know it'll make you mad. I asked her why she let Heinz's tease and make her so mad then. I hate my name, she say. Spicy. Whoever heard of such a silly name? My mama was all set to call me Rose, but our old mistress say no and name me Spicy. Mama had to do it. Couldn't say nothing about it. The more I learn about Spicy, the more I like her. But the more I hurt deep down for her, too. Day later. Hints hardly ever comes to the kitchen since he and Spicy had that bad falling out. So I've been going to the stables whenever I get a chance. Is Spicy mean to you? Hints asked me. Not at all. I told him Spicy is just toting a lot of hurt from the way she's been treated. He nodded at understanding. I really do like her a lot. I think she might be my friend. I wrote F-R-I-E-N-D-S. This time I seen Hints, Wook, and now Spicy. Missy ain't even now in the picture. Wednesday. Hints and Moss Henley been going to horse races most every week. They rode off last night on the way to Southampton. Hints is a mighty fine jockey. Wins a heap of money for Moss Henley. Wednesday evening. I can smell the word K-I-T-C-H-E-N and see it, too. It always smells good. Herbs hanging from the eaves, drying. Hickory chips slow burning on the back fire. A pot bubbling or boiling. Aunt T loves her big four-hip fireplace where four grown women can stand side by side and cook together. She's truly the mistress of Belmont's kitchen. Miss Lily was in the kitchen today, chattering on about what she wanted fixed for a special dinner. Auntie just say, yes, Miss Lily. But in the end, Auntie cooked what she always fixes on Wednesday. I had to tell Spicy how Auntie and Moss Henley got along. Moss Henley be real particular about what goes in his mouth. He don't trust nobody but Auntie to fix his food. I once heard him say he wouldn't eat behind a cook he had to beat. Scared of being poisoned, I suppose. Aunt T know just who she cooks for, and it ain't Miss Lily. Moss specs to have fried chicken and whipped potatoes on Wednesdays, and that's what I fixed, and that's what we served to the guests tonight. Next day. Telling Spicy the way things work here at Belmont is fun. Last night I explained to her why Mass Henley favors Aunt T, but all the time against Uncle Heb. The best way for her to get an understanding was to start at the beginning, back when Mass Henley first come to Belmont. Uncle Heb was here at Belmont when Mass Henley married Miss Lily, who was a widow woman with one child. Uncle Hem ran the place, keeping the orchards going and all. Word tell, Uncle Heb was once a tall, handsome man. Even now, all crippled from hard work and age, he still looked good. First thing when he got here, Moss Henley wanted to sell Uncle Heb. Miss Lily wouldn't have it. Uncle Heb had been born here at Belmont. Him and Miss Lily's daddy, David Monroe, was boys together. Miss Lily likes to brag that presidents and governors have ate here at Belmont. Uncle Heb loves to brag, too. Been all over this American land, he say, calling up memories about when he traveled round with David Monroe. He say he been everywhere. Take the time me and the master went to Richmond, Norfolk, Jamestown, even been to Mount Vernon. Been everywhere, all over this big American country. I would give anything to just see one of them places. Hints is the onlyest one of us who done traveled further than Uncle Heb. I remember once, William told me there were ghosts in the woods, and a big snake lived there. It ate up all slaves who dared to leave Belmont. 
It was Uncle Heb who taught me better. Everybody young and old loves the old man. Everybody except in Mass Henley. And that cause he's part of Miss Lily's family. Mass Henley ain't nothing but white trash who married into a fine Virginia family, say Uncle Heb. He's never had no use for his new master. Saturday. There was a gathering down in the barn tonight, cause Wook jumped the broom with Lee, a man from the Teasdale plantation, near about twice Wook's age. Ma's Henley came down to the party and said a few words about wanting them to have lots and lots of babies. I can't believe Wook is married. She's only a few years older than me, and I ain't near about ready to be married. And by the look on Wook's face, she ain't ready neither. I didn't even know she was looking at boys. Now she's married, and I didn't even know it. Why didn't she tell me? All of us from the kitchen were there. Spicy came, even though she didn't want to. Uncle Heb cut roses for each one of us to put in our hair. I took the red one, and Spicy liked the yellow one. She looks happier than when she came here, but her eyes still hold a lot of sorry. Hints got back. He was there, dancing with all the girls. The only man that ain't married here at Belmont is Hints. Everybody's wondering who will Hints jump the broom with. The way Missy's been looking at him, I think she'd say yes to him today. But Hints can do better than Missy. I sure hope so. Hints does know how to have a good time. Ever since I can remember, he's danced with me first. Tonight, he passed right by and asked Spicy to dance first. I was surprised and a bit put out. I suppose it's his way of making up to her. I didn't think Spicy would dance with him, but I was wrong. When she stood up, everybody started giggling. Everybody knows how clumsy Spicy can be. But she fooled us all kicking up her heels and patting the juba better than anybody round here had seen before. I saw a sight of spicy I didn't know was there. She was happy, smiling big, light-footed, free as a bird. Spicy wasn't clumsy at all when she was dancing. Looking at Hints and her turning together made me forget I was mad at Hints for not dancing with me first. It was all right. After that dance, everybody was asking Spicy to cut a pigeon wing or shoe fly. Nobody asked me to dance. Even if they did, Aunt T wouldn't let me, cause she say I'm not courting age yet. Just hints, cause he's like a brother. It was such a good party, but I don't think Wook enjoyed one minute of it. She just sat with her arms folded, looking sad. If she didn't want to get married, why did she? Sunday. Hints came to worship service for the first time this morning, only cause Aunt T made him. He sat between Spicy and me and made faces trying to make us laugh. Aunt T pinched me on the arm to make me behave. All the time, Missy rolled her eyes at us. Then afterwards, we all had to hurry back to get supper on the table. But Missy jumped in front of Spicy. Just cause you up in the big house with the white folks don't mean you going to get to marry Hints. He going to jump the broom with me. So don't you be looking at him, you hear? And she strutted away. Hins ain't thinking about jumping the broom with nobody. Missy just wanted to say something mean to Spicy. But I can't help but think, spicy and hints? Now there's a match I wouldn't have put together. But the more I think about it, I remember them dancing together, the better I like the idea. Spicy and hints. Monday. I've been learning a lot during st study time. I know the seasons, the days of the week, the months and the order they come in. Mostly, we tell time by the sun, the moon, and what's happening on the day. The rains have set in, and it's hard to tell one day from the next. Just grayness. No sun. Everything I touch feels dampish. Tuesday. Wook waved at me from the fields. I waved back. Aunt T, I, say, I can't keep company with Wook anymore, because she's a married woman. Girls and women ought not to mingle. When I write Wook's name, I sees her being growed up woman with a husband. A part of me wants to be round and full like Wook, or maybe a little bit wild and pretty like Missy, or even tall and strong-looking like Spicy, but I ain't none of those things. But if I could be, I'd like to be just a little bit pretty. I've looked at myself in Miss Lily's mirror before. I ain't what you'd call homely, but I'd like for my teeth not to be so big. My head sits square on my so shoulders, but I'd like to be taller, stronger. I guess I'm all right. But I don't feel all right. Wednesday. It was during the dark of night when Rufus came knocking at the kitchen door, 
hollering and all in a sweat. Aggie was about to give birth. I begged Aunt T to let me go with her during the birthing, but she ain't never let me go, and she didn't this time either. She took spicy. I was mad and sat in a huff. Big girls got to do all kinds of things. I wasn't little any more, and I wasn't a grown-up woman. I was something in between. I fumed and fussed until they got back, and I made Spicy tell me everything. Everything. Aunt T was right. Midwife and ain't for me. I don't think I ever want to see a baby being birthed. Not after what Spicy say went on. But I looked close at the smile on Spicy's face while she was telling me that Rufus and Angie had a big, healthy boy. And I helped to get him here, she say real excited, like. Spicy had light in her eyes. I heard happy in her voice, and I knew Aunt T was right to take Spicy along. Next day. All I can think about today is that Angie and Rufus have now made Maz Henley the owner of 28 slaves. Their little baby don't belong to them. He belongs to Maz Henley. Following day. I went to see the new baby today. I picked a bunch of wildflowers to take to Aggie. Aunt T sent a basket of good things she had been holding back for Angie to eat because she's nursing and needs the nourishmentation. Wook showed me her new baby brother. It felt so good to hold him. So soft. Angie and Rufus be so proud. I see why. Their baby boy is so beautiful. Aunt T seen to it that Mas Henley allows new mothers a week from the fields after having a baby. Angie will get to be with her son for a whole week. Just him and her. I finally got a chance to talk to Wook, and I found out about her getting married. Like I suspicioned, Wook hates being married. But Mouse Henley made her marry Lee. See, Miss Lily keeps up with the girls who come of age, and she tells Moss Henley. When Wook turned fifteen, he told her to choose a husband. When she didn't, he picked out Lee, said they'd make strong babies. Lee don't love me, she said and I don't love him. This ain't no marriage. Aunt T and Uncle Heb didn't love each other when they got married, but they grew to later on. Maybe you and Lee will come to care about each other. I didn't believe what I was saying, and neither did Wook. How can they, when they don't even now live together? Lee can only get pants once in a while. Is that going to happen to me? When I come of age, is Mas Henley going to make me marry somebody just so I can have babies for him to own? I won't let that happen to me. I won't. Saturday. All week we've been busy cleaning the big house. Winter dirt been scrubbed away to make room for summer dust. We've all worked until our hands be raw and our backs ache. Aunt T made a salve to help the soreness. She makes me watch when she's making up stuff. I know the recipes to all kinds of salves and potions, but she done forbidden me to tell anyone her secrets. It makes me feel bad sometimes that Aunt T tells me your secrets, because I'm scared to tell her mine. Later on, an old gambling friend of Moss Henley's, Stanley Graves, be here for a day or so. Miss Lily been taking her meals with William. Not that she wanted to, but despite Moss Henley, she don't prove of his gambling. While Spicy Me was a servant dessert, we overheard Graves and Moss talking about abolistines. I listened to as much as I dared. Graves say they think the abolistines might run a man for president of the United States. I know about the president from study time. He's the master of all the other masters. If the president is an abolistine, then he can do away with slavery and the masters can't stop him. I heard a new word. Secession. I'm going to add it to my list of words to know. Third Sunday in May. I read the calendar on Moss Henley's desk. It is Sunday, May 22, 1859. Rufus talked about the Garden of Eden this morning. God's garden, filled with peace, love, no hurt, no suffering, and no slavery. There ain't no such place round here, and that's for sure. All through the service we could hear Moss Henley and Miss Lily fighting again, shouting mead words, flying every which way. That means it's going to be hard on Spicy Me when we have to tend her. She just as soon slap us for being in the room as to not. After Sunday late meal, I came here to write in my special spot, I just wrote B-O-A-T, and I see a boat full of people sailing past Belmont on their way to somewhere. I wave at them. They wave back. Wonder are they thinking about me the way I'm thinking about them? Wonder are there any abolistines on that boat?
days later. Rained all yesterday and today. No scary thunder and lightning. Just a steady drip, drip, drop. Been so damp, mold is creeping up the side of the kitchen walls. We spent the morning scrubbing the walls down with vinegar water. After last meal, Aunt T sent Spicy down to the stables with Hintz's dinner. She come back just a smiling. Well, I do declare, say Aunt T, looking real surprised. I believe Spicy is sweet on Hintz. Aunt T is about the last one to catch on. Everybody's talking about how the two of them been looking at each other in that special way. I knew it since the party. Spicy and Hintz. That Missy is about to have a cat fit. Good. Next afternoon. It's Thursday. I shall never forget this day. William almost caught me reading. Lordy, I got to be more careful. I was dusting Mass Henley's study, where there are all manner of books. I found one called an atlas. I was so excited to find out it was a book filled with maps. I was looking for Virginia, when all at once the door flew open, and William walked in. William laughed real wicked-like. I know what you were doing, he said. You was reading that book. I thought I would die when he called his mama. My tongue got thick and my throat felt dry when I thought about what was going to happen to me. Miss Lily came running from the large parlor, answering William's call. Mother, Clotie was reading, William said. She was in here with the door shut. I caught her reading, and he laughed and laughed. I stood there with my head down, looking as blank face as I could. Miss Lily made William stop tormenting me. I thought you called me about something serious. Where would Clotie learn how to read, she said. Her petticoat switched as she walked away. Keep the door open, Clodie, says Miss Lily, turning to look back at me, real curious-like. William had just been funnin'. He went on laughing, but my knees was still shaking. Saturday. Aunt T said her elbow hurt all night, so it was going to rain for a nightfall. I don't know why it should surprise me. Aunt T's elbow is good at calling the weather, but the almanac I seen in Mass Henley's study say the May of 1859 was going to be wet. I found out about an almanac the same way I found out about the atlas, just by dusting the bookshelves in Moss Henley's study. At first, I couldn't believe that somebody could know ahead when the moon was going to be full. But sure enough, the moon was full on the very day the almanac said it would be. Now I've got to be very careful looking through Moss Henley's books, getting answers to my questions. After almost getting caught, I'm real nervous-like. Monday. The sun is still up, even though the time of day is late. Miss Lily has changed the study time to early in the morning when it's cool. I'm still supposed to fan. Hintz and William went for a morning ride, making William late. Miss Lily pitched a fit. Sooner or later, all of us gets on the bad side of Miss Lily. But Hintz can't do nothing to please her. Good thing Hintz comes under Moss Henley's say-so. Hintz would have had it hard if he had to work with Miss Lily. He knows it and stays away from her most of the time, too. Word tell Miss Lily hates Hintz on account of his mama Ola and the talk that goes on about Mass Henley being the boy's father. Aunt T is real close-mouthed about it, but from what I can pick up here and there from the woman in the quarters, Miss Lily wouldn't rest till Hintz's mama was sold. Say Ola just, was just too pretty. Miss Lily would have sold Hintz, too, but Mas Henley put his foot down on that. Say a male slave would bring more money when he got older and been trained. Moz Henley promised Miss Lily he would keep Hintz till he was at least sixteen. At first frost, Hintz come into his sixteenth year. Wonder will Miss Lily remember the promise? I hope not. I wouldn't want nothing bad to happen to my brother friend Hintz. Tuesday. Thinking about Hintz's mama always puts me to thinking about my own, cause they was sold one shortly after the other. Longer days allows me more chances to write. I just wrote M-A-M-A. -M -A. Mama. I see her the way I seen her last. A dark-faced woman with joyedly eyes. Then the bad lonesome feeling comes into my heart. Memories that sour in my heart. No more writing this night.